What's up everybody? My name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my Seder. So today we are going to be talking about none other than the winner's curse. Last week I said that it was kind of meh, you know, I wasn't too interested in it. But then about halfway through it decided to become amazing and rip out my heart and put it in a blender and then give it back to me in a smoothie of sadness. And that is my way of saying, this book is awesome. Here, why don't you read it? The book takes place in a mythical world where you have the Valorians and the Harani, and the Valorians have taken over the Haran Peninsula and have enslaved all their people and have been living there for about 10 years. It's kind of become the norm. It centers around Kestrel, who is the daughter of a general, which kind of makes her, like, really high up. It's like being like a lord or whatever. And she buys a slave named Aaron who is secretly working with a rebel group to take back the peninsula. The first half of this book is not super interesting. It's mostly there to set up everything. It's explaining you know, the rules of the world and who the characters are and you know what they're doing and it kind of grows the romance and it does all this because in the second half of the book, through the rebellion, they take back the peninsula, it completely switches perspectives and now Aaron is on top and Kestrel is his prisoner. You get to kind of see what it's like through everyone else's eyes because you have to keep in mind they've been living this way for 10 years so to someone like Kestrel who's still pretty young, this is the only life she's ever really known. So yes, the way they took over the peninsula was terrible. Of course, the people are going to want to take it back, but you can't really blame these people because they didn't. They don't know any better. This is the only life they ever lived, and you get to see from Aaron's perspective how his life was completely turned upside down when this invasion happened, and he lost everything and now he just wants to get it back and he just wants everything to be back the way it was. That's one of the things about this book. Like, There's a lot of themes in this book and one of them is that nothing's black and white, everything is much more complex than it seems, and another is that nothing can ever go back to the way it was before. And you see that a lot with how Kestrel and Aaron fall in love and you start to see that because of who they are and what their values are, they're never going to betray their people, even if they're not really betraying their people by being together. There's really no way for them to be together because, you know, if the Harani take back the peninsula, Kestrel could be with Aaron and use her strategic skills to help them keep it, but she'd be betraying her father and she'd be betraying her people and she can't bring herself to do it. The same went for Aaron in the beginning. He could have just given in and loved Kestrel and hoped that maybe they could figure out something and that he wouldn't just be a slave and they wouldn't just be scandalous rumors, but he needed to take back the peninsula because that's who he is. He couldn't go back and betray his people. It could and that's really amazing. Like, I just, I've never before have I read a book where you so fully understand who the characters are that you know how it's gonna play out. Like there's no, oh you should have done this. It's, oh, of course you were gonna do it this way because that's who you are. That's what your values are and of course that was the choice that you were gonna make. And it's just, <laughs> it really blows my mind. Like I, there was never once where I was could come up with a better way for things to have gone. I mean of course everything didn't go very well, but there was no other way for the events to play out because of who the characters are and the way they were presented. The other big theme with this book is that you may win, but if the stakes are so high that you're gonna lose everything, you didn't really win. And that's the winner's curse. It's like winning comes with a price. And you see that demonstrated a lot throughout the story, it just, you know, with like little things. But the biggest example of it is right at the end when Kestrel does escape, she goes to the Emperor, she tells him they've taken the peninsula, we need to do something, and she realizes that she doesn't want her people to go attack them because she sees that they're just taking back their land because that's what's right and she doesn't want to infringe on that and of course she doesn't want Eren to be hurt. But 
there, she can't just say, you know, oh, just let them have it because that's not the Valorian way. They don't give in. They're very proud. So she tells the Emperor, why don't you let them keep the peninsula, let them run it the way they see fit, but whoever's in charge will answer to you. And the Emperor likes this, but under one condition, she has to marry his son, which of course means she can't be with Aaron, although could she ever really? Well, maybe in this new kind of world, but not anymore. She of course steps because, you know, she's it's the best course of action. What else could she do? Let everybody else die? When she tells Aaron that that's the plan, she just lets him think that she's this terrible person that was just like, oh, of course, I'm gonna be rich and I'm gonna be an empress, why wouldn't I do this? And it just, oh my god, it tore my heart out. And that's kind of why I have to read the rest of the series. I just, I wanna know what happens, and I know that the sequels are never as good as the original, but I'm gonna read them anyway. That is The Winner's Curse. I highly recommend it if you really like books that make you think and you like when there's just this big overall meta commentary and it's just like a metaphor for life. I don't know. It's very deep. It's a lot more than meets the eye. Yes, it is a romance story and that is what it is on the surface. So if you do not like romance stories at all, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you do like things that go deeper and you can look past that, I would highly recommend it. So what's next for me? I just finished Aragon. Like, literally, as I was setting up this equipment. I'm not going to make a video for it because I've read it before and I really don't have anything to say about it. My rating is still the same. I still had the same feelings coming out of it. I am not going to reread the rest of the series. Done with that. I am going to be rereading Fallen Kingdoms because I got the fourth one, but it's been a while, so I kind of need to reread them, which means that I will be rereading the first one, at least, for like the fifth time, the fourth time, I don't even know, but they're amazing and I love them, so that's okay. I'm fine with that. And then I'm going to be listening to Silo. I don't know anything about this book other than that it's, you know, they're quarantined and there's a virus outbreak and there might be zombies. That would be cool. I am pretty excited for it. I think it's going to be kind of cool. And I should be done with this one um, by next week, so this will definitely be the next video out for you guys. And that's all I got for today, so I'll see you next time. Bye! I didn't throw it on the floor that time. It's, it's safe.